So cancer is a cell that loses its natural properties and starts behaving in an abnormal way. It doesn't die, it eats away, it parasites on the other cells, it produces a lot of toxins that are the same body. So while doing so, our immunity is having a special property to identify a bad behaving cell. So it tries to kill it, keep a check on that. So the moment it, the cancer cell starts behaving in a very, very docile way, like just like a bad student behaving good in front of a student, a teacher, so it just starts behaving well, well, goody goody with his immunity and escapes it. So that's how cancer keeps on growing. And the moment you make the immunity aware and then just discriminate between these good and bad cells, it is going to eliminate the cancer. So this is what actually cancer immunotherapy means. So how we tax is a very, very pretty unique phenomenon. Each and every cell in our body is having an identity card, a tag card called MHC. The moment any cell enters our body that doesn't possess this identity card, we call it as a foreign cell. So there is a set of cells in the body called natural killer cells whose job is to see and then check for this identity. The moment any cell doesn't have this identity card, they ruthlessly kill those cells. It may be bacteria, virus, or cancer. Even cancer doesn't have the MHC because it's an abnormal cell. And it doesn't only really just stop there. It takes this thing and then just activates the entire system. So how it does? It says, boss, a person with a blue pant and a white shirt. That's called antigenic sequence. A uniqueness of the bacteria, virus, and cancer cells. And then activates the system. So there is a antibodies that are formed that will just go and engulf, just like, you know, they suffocate the cell to death. There is an antibody-dependent cellular acidotoxin. The moment I just hold the cell or an enemy, then the antibody-dependent cells come and just hits it and kills them. The third thing is complement-mediated system. They just form pores, just like, you know, puncturing the cells and then just cells will be dying. Other than this, there are multimodal mechanisms how the immunity takes care of these abnormal cells. So the moment cancer escapes it, you have cancer spreading in the body. The moment you activate the immune system to kill it, cancer will be killed. So this is the broader contours of how cancer forms, how immunity tries to tackle, how cancer escapes, how you can just reactivate the immunity to, to kill the cancer cells. This entire phenomena in nutshell can be described in three words cancer in a room therapy. Sorry for lacking the wrong. So as I told you the immunity is having different parts like cell mediated immunity, antibody mediated immunity like that. So the immunotherapy is also of multiple types. The most popularly accepted word for immunotherapy among the oncologists is called checkpoint inhibitors. It's a very interesting phenomenon. So what cancer does is, it just remotely controls the immune system, that is T-cells, and puts a break on it. So the T-cell doesn't come and attack the cancer cells. And this checkpoint inhibitor just releases these breaks. And the T-cell comes and attacks the cancer cells. The cancer cells will die. So this is this particular phenomenon, which is oversimplified by the way, is called checkpoint inhibitor therapy. So like PD1, PDL1 inhibitors, these are all come under the category of the checkpoint inhibitors. The other cell thing is called adoptive cell therapy. Adoptive cell therapy means you have cancer inside your body, your immunity is also inside your body. I just take out the cancer cell, I take out the immunity teach this immunity on how to identify and kill this particular cancer cell. So this is called adaptive, adaptive immunotherapy. And the commonest example for this which we use in our teaching is uh, CAR T cell therapy, antibody mediated T cell therapy, which can cure patients even after bone marrow transplantation, especially A level sensitive focus. The third thing is cytokine based therapy which we used to use when we are students in chronic minor leukemias as well as renal cell carcinomas. Cytokines are nothing but chemicals 
that activates the immune. The other thing is intravesical therapies, like the vaccines we use in the BCG and other things that is into the body will also try to stimulate the immunity. The stimulated immunity in turn will take care of the cancer. That's BCG, intravesical cancers and other things. Other therapy is bone marrow transplantation, allogenic itself is a big immunotherapy in itself. Right? So monoclonal antibodies, it is an antibody mediated immunotherapy. We have a big list that goes on and on and on, rituximab, trastizumab, bevacizumab. So these are all types of immunotherapies that are available in the markets. Multiple types, multiple ways. It can be given subcutaneous, intravenous, intrathecal, intravesical, lot of routes we use it. So ultimate goal is to ensure the right immunity in the right quantity to kill the right cancers and not harming the normal cells. So the entire engineering, what we call the bioengineering happens around this. Practically no cancer is an exception, right? Because cancer doesn't behave like a normal cell. So any difference that you can identify and then just ensure that the T cells will identify and kill and potentially cure any cancer cells. Having said that, it is not a proved universal. Few cancers, it got approval like lung cancer, it got approval, it got approval in the relapse, acute lymphoblastic leukemias, few of the lymphomas like Hodgkin's disease. We have approvals, we have in the bladder cancer. The numbers are growing and there are a lot of studies that are being conducted that goes on and on and on. And it's just like another therapy searching for indication. The moment you try, it succeeds. If not completely, at least partially. Yes, definitely yes. Right? No. The uh, entire evidence-based medicine is on predicting which treatment is likely to work and which treatment is unlikely to work. Right? Mm -hmm. So again, it's not a 100% accurate science. It's having its own limitations and sensitivities and specificities. So if I have to sum up, there are tests like PDL1 expression or PD1 expression that you do by different tests, which are standardized and approved by the internationally approved bodies like FDA and other things. That is one thing. You can do the tumor mutation budding analysis and uh, you know you can just do the MMR or MSA. So these are all the things that can help you to predict which cancer type likely to respond, which is unlikely to respond. It's highly variable. It depends upon multiple factors. The factors that are related to the patient, whether his immunity is naturally strong or weak, whether he's having any other comorbid conditions like diabetes, blah 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 blah. So that is going to reduce his immunity. Second thing is disease related, how aggressive the disease is, how well it responded to the chemotherapy, how soon it came back, how big it came back. So the burden of the disease, the organs, what are all got involved. So this is disease related factors. Thing is treatment related factors, whether we are locking down the immunity completely, what type of earlier therapy has received, how many lines of therapy has received. So it's a combination of these three things. So if all of them are favorable, immunotherapy does miracles. If all of them are uh, not favorable, it's just like any other drug that can fail very soon. So it's, the spectrum is very big. It can be wonderful to not acting at all. Sometimes it may cause pseudo progression of the disease, which is a real danger. As I told you, the previous in my previous question, the factors include the patient. If the patient's immunity is not strong enough, it won't work. Second thing is his immune makeup. If his immunity fails to identify a very normal looking cancer cell versus a normal cell, it just escapes. Cancer keeps on growing. So the ability of the immunity to identify cancer cell plays a phenomenal role in determining whether it is likely to work or not. And if the cancer cell is extremely similar to the normal cell, it just misses. That's it. So it fails. The other thing is, if the immunity is suppressed significantly by giving some drugs like chemotherapy, steroids, or something else, then also it fails. So these are all the few reasons, besides many other reasons why it fails. There are a lot. People think that immunity is your own immunity, so it will not cause any side effects. That's an absolute myth. 
once you stimulate the immunity, it starts producing its own side effects. Like if you have a fever, if you have infection, you have fever, chills, body pains. Why? Because your immunity is activated. It tries to kill the bacteria. In this process, the chemical cells called cytokines keeps on destroying the bad cells as well as good cells. So all these flu-like symptoms, what we call the infection-related symptoms, are the natural side effects of the immunotherapy. Besides this, there may be a very rare phenomena called autoimmune phenomena. So that means body immunity tries to kill itself. That can also happen like pneumonitis, arthritis, so on. The question is both yes, no, and we don't know sort of thing. So for few cancers, immunotherapy is superior, like relapsed acute lymphoblastic leukemia. No other go other than immunotherapy. Might be a transplant or a CAR T cell therapy. For few diseases, chemotherapy still is a boss, like what we call it's a chronic myeloid leukemia, early stage, good prognosis, imaginable go, like early breast cancers. So for few of the cancers, they are combined, like in lung cancer. Okay, docetaxel can be combined with immunotherapy to have a better results. So it's not like a one answer suffice for one cancer. Even within the cancer also there are many other subtypes which will be variable. So sometimes chemo good, sometimes immuno good, sometimes both good. We are far away from that. We haven't seen even a single case of getting cured with immunotherapy except for the CAR T cell therapy as the adoptive immune cell therapy is totally earlier. But yes, it's very hopeful. We are inching towards the cure of long term disease with survival. A long way to go. Difficult to answer at this moment. Yes, pretty much available. We have a lot of drugs, almost all available in India without any exception. There are a lot of clinical trials also that are running in India where you can just participate in them and get access to the latest of the drugs as well. Yes, there are a lot. At least six, seven cancer trials, in my knowledge, are aware are recruiting patients across not less than 30 centers across India. If you will, if you are willing, if there are no other major options available to you, it's always a very good options to follow.